You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get down, eh? Get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. You all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Are you feeling hot? <laughs> I'm feeling hot, hot, hot. It's 100 degrees out here on Grammy land. Holy smokes, and the wind is blowing 90 to nothing. Well, maybe not blowing that hard, but yeah. It's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride tonight. Also, I got my youngest daughter showing up sometime while I am broadcasting with her hubby. So, God knows, if you hear any background inter- interference or something, it's just my kid and her hubby. I told him go on out to the playhouse and grab a beer, because, yeah, I stocked up yesterday. Because liquor store is closed today. And you know why it's closed? I'll tell you why. Because it's the 4th of July. <laughs> It's Independence Day. How independent are you feeling? That depends. Are you independent as in you take responsibility for your own actions? Hmm, let's find out, shall we? In the meantime, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Wait for it. I have a new channel, apparently. I've been a good little girl. (laughs) I'm now on channel 10. Booyah! Although the picture that Grimmy put on there, uh, yeah, okay, that's me. And yeah, no no makeup, no, just just showing off my hair color. (laughs) Oh, well, it's okay. It's all good. Yeah, that's who you're listening to, just in case you're curious. It's just me. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, yeah channel 10 i've made it into the double digits hot diggity dog um sweet rob works just fired up the bubbler yay yay wow dang it's hot everywhere holy crap and holy independence that is so true grimmy independence people are dependent upon big brother government because it knows what's best for you sure it does <laughs> oh someone else does that for you pox fight damn you overachiever what'd you do talk them into it <laughs> thanks rob <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. (laughs) There aren't very many pictures of me out there, actually. And if there are, it's because I'm with my grandkids or something like that. And so, yeah. I'm usually behind the camera, not in front of it. So, (laughs) okay, let me get to busy saying hi to everybody. Let's see, over here on Fakey Book, do I have anybody? The lovely Mary B. I saw popped in. Um, hey, bubs, I see you. How you doing, hon? You furry little friend, you. Uh, let's see. That's pretty much all there is over on Fakey Book. Now, over on Twitter, Gary L and Grimmy and Barman all tweeted me out there. Thank you, guys. And I lost a stalker. Now, I gained a lot of stalkers, but then I lost some stalkers, too. So, you know, it's not all that bad, because I'm thinking, shit, if I'm losing stalkers, I'm pissing people off, and that means I'm doing something right. (laughs) I know, I'm kind of weird like that, but hey... What the hell? Um, oh, and Cowboy Tech over here, too. Hey, Cowboy. How you doing, sweetheart? Um, thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out again. Got to put that out there. Over here on this effing site, Cowboy Tech is over here, as well as Grimner and uh, KD Troxel and Loki Luck and me. And I saw Estrella on here earlier. Um used to I used to smoke weed I still do but I used to too <laughs> oh how funny and cowboy posted something on here that um I will get to here in just a minute but I got to finish my 
finish my go rounds. Let's see, over here on Mines, thank you, Barman, for sharing it over on Mines. I'm actually loitering on the uh, nature Natural Cures page right now over here, so I haven't been, yeah, it's been a day. It's been a crazy day. It's been a freaking hot day. It's feeling hot, hot, hot. Okay, uh, now, let's see, I've done Twitter, I've done Effin site, I've done Fakey Book, I've done Minds. I guess that means I need to go to the one place where you need to be if you want to give me static. So if you're listening in on um, all of those, you know, other stations that are out there, because it's like TuneIn Radio Station and Internet Radio Station and Spreaker and all those other places. If you're listening there but you want to chat with me, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Have a good time. Give me some static. I'll give it right back to you. And, um... Yeah, because I, I don't have good enough internet to keep lots of different chats open. I, I will lose things. I lose things anyway, usually my mind. But, um... <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that works, Poxified. Okay, I got a kitty cat trying to help me here. Thank you, rascal. Okay, so over here in the RLM, right up top. Um, rascal? You are being a rascal. You are earning your name, you little turd monkey. She's a kitty cat, but she's a turd. Okay, uh, barman right up top, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Why? Because I said so. That's why. I also see Cowboy Tech is here, who is always hearing pleasant voices. Don't ever get your hearing checked, hon. Seriously. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, and who I will be going ami, 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 ami to, because, yes, thank you, sir. I earned my own channel in the double digits even. <laughs> How fun is that? I'm I'm excited. Okay, I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here, or at least logged in. I haven't seen her chitty chat for a while, though. And looky there, Kate is here. Hi, Kate. Is it really ha 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 down there in Florida? Because got dandruff, some of it itches. It's 91 freaking degrees in Ontario. Concord, Ontario. That's freaking hot. Thank you, sweetheart. I needed a sip of my lemon water. Okay. Uh, Asmo is here. Hi, Asmo. As well as Chalcedoni, who is the strong silent type. Or at least that's the way I think of him. Chloe! Did you uh, pollinate your flowers, Chloe? On your zucchini? <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, kind of funny. Okay. Oh! <laughs> I see you, Poxified. Okay. Uh, Free Enslaved is here. Hi, Free. How are you doing, honey? I also see IB Don C is here, as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. And looky there, JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. I had to say the whole thing just because. Um, sitting on a shelf. Oh, so you got a webcam on a shelf instead of an elf on a shelf. Okay, cool. Ooh, damn. I'll trade you, Kate. Okay, I just got to do this. I got to see what what Fluky says. It is here. 95. Yeah, right. That's not what my car said when I drove back from town. It's freaking hot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Frumpy. Yeah. <laughs> We it's hot out here. Okay, I also see the lovely rain is here, and yeah, rain. It lo I looked at the um my uh, radar earlier, and it looks like I might get some rain. That would be kind of cool. I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. She's the one that gives us weather reports as well as Barman, and I think even Skittle does it. Yes, yeah, Skittle does it too. How cool is that? Poxified showed me how to do that. Okay. Yeah, I got sunburned the other day, and when I was out playing in in the weeds, well, in the garden this morning, I'm getting a section at a time, because that freaking bindweed is crazy. Shit's got roots that go all the way to hell. I swear to God. But, yeah, 
I got sunburned the other day, and I had a shirt on today, like an actual shirt, as opposed to the swimsuit top that I had the other day. And, yeah, <laughs> it, I felt the burn through the shirt. So, yeah, I didn't stay out very long once the sun, once the shade was no longer there. Moving along, who am I at? Rob Works, who fired up the bubbler. Yay, Rob Works. Thank you, dude. Everybody appreciates that. You know they do. I also see Romes is in the house. Woohoo! Hi, Romes. How you doing? Phantom is here. He's not on the bottom. Hey, you moved up a notch, or quite a few notches there, Phantom. I also see Colfax 101, as well as Dakota and Frumpy. And I'm here. And I'm just, I'm, it's just, wow. Okay. Hmm. And is that I be Doncy Woik? It is I be Doncy Woik. Let me, let me adjust my, adjusting the volume. Okay. I also see Kozu is in the house as well as Moy, 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 Moy. And now it's time to put a pox upon everything because we have our very own pox in the box here in RLM chat. Because we got Pox Box and Pox of Fight and Pox of Phone and Pox of Home all showing here in my list. As well as Pon Popon Sauce and Sock Puppet. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the F-bomb dropper, Skittle. Hi, Skittle. Osseal. What? What? Osseal. Okay. Addicted to love. Dorothy and the Dealer. Oh, okay. I may have to actually pay attention to that one. That's a video, though, so I can't do that tonight. Um, oh, cool. So, should I go with something healthy, or should I go with something that, you know, has to do with independence and all that other fun? Because, yeah, there's so many people out there. How about I do um, the independence one first, and then I can go play on the other fun stuff. This is from ZeroHedge.com. How to Make Your Life a Declaration of Independence. It's by Daisy Luther via the Organic Prepper blog. Yay! So, a couple of centuries ago, our country's founding fathers wrote and signed a declaration of, independ of our independence from another country. Mm -hmm. They included a Bill of Rights that they wished to ensure for their descendants. While not perfect people by any means, they tried to create a nation of liberty that would go on for centuries to come. Or if you listen to Ben Franklin, you know, a generation or two. Because you know, it's kind of an experiment. I think that was Ben Franklin that said that. If not him, it was Thomas Jefferson. One of them guys. In any case, what people seem to be missing is that the Bill of Rights isn't a list of privileges granted to us by gray-haired rich men in the 1700s, we are endowed with natural human rights from the moment that we are born. And I got to put this in there, not just in USA. It's everywhere. If you are born, you are endowed with natural human rights. They stipulated that for here, but that is a global kind of thing. That's something that I have a hell of a time convincing people. Okay, just because other countries don't have that written down, just because they don't have a piece of paper with a bunch of squiggles on it, that doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to them, too. <clears throat> we also bear the responsibility to protect our independence from those who would subjugate us. Yeah, because freedom ain't free. You got to work at it. Work it, work it. So, fast forward to our current day. Human ingenuity has come so far in many ways, but at the same time, many have lost that spark of liberty, that sense of compassion, and that pride that urges us to achieve even greater things. There's so many people in our country who are just ready to turn over all control of their lives and wait for a handout. Why? Because, well, it's the government. And you know why they don't get that connection? Here you go. Our education system has had a great hand in this. These days, many educators are more likely to wax poetic over the joys 
of socialism than to tempt students with greatness with the benefits of capitalism. Although I'm not real keen on capitalism either, but hey. The decades of indoctrination is beginning to overcome centuries of liberal, liberty-minded ideals. Now, <clears throat> it only takes a couple of generations to completely screw shit up. Completely screw it up. But actually, all it takes is just a few like-minded people to keep spreading that word. And you can really make things crazy. So lately, the 4th of July simply makes me sad, which, yeah, I really could give two shits less. I was trying to summon up a rush of pride to write about what makes our country great. And all I could think about was how far we've sunk. How distant we've ventured from those original settlers who said, no more, and declared their independence. They fought and sacrificed to be free of a government that oppressed them, taxed them, stole from them, and enforced rules without any type of representation upon them. We have somehow forgotten what freedom really means, and so we have lost it, incrementally, and for many people, voluntarily. So here we stand today, on July 4th, 2018, with a government that has systematically crushed the rights that were demanded more than 240 years ago when the Founding Fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. And I'm not just talking about the current administration. This stuff has been going on for decades, if not longer. They tax us unreasonably, and if we don't pay, they will tax the money right from your bank accounts or steal our possessions. In many states, we must ask for permission to catch a fish, drive a car, own a gun, or build an extra room onto our homes, just to name a few. Permits and licenses are big revenue generators from start to finish, and if you proceed without asking permission, Please, sir, may I take in another breath? They will extort more money from you in the form of fines. So if you refuse to pay the fines, or if they, you can't, then they'll kidnap you and lock you in a cage where you'll be forced to perform manual labor for 10 cents an hour for whatever length of time the legal authority feels is sufficient to teach you a lesson and pay back your debt to society. Then there's civil asset forfeiture. In many instances, without due process or a trial, our possessions and money can be taken from us on the suspicion that they are the benefits of some crime we haven't even been convicted of. We're unable to voice our opinions without incurring the wrath of so-called justice warriors who may actually mean well in an idealistic kind of way but end up causing more oppression when they try to right a wrong by forcing people to abide by their way of thinking. And this is only if we get past the censors on social media. And yet... People comply. They truly believe that this is what freedom looks like. When they lose freedoms, they comfort themselves with, this is the price we pay to live somewhere safe and civilized. Really? If you give up your liberties in order for security, you will end up with neither. Every time a bad act occurs, people plead to give away even more of their freedom because they believe it will make them safer. They're willing to be fondled and naked body scanned by TSA in order to board a plane. <laughs> Not me. They want to make a phone call and wait for the police to save them instead of picking up their own firearm and refusing to be a victim. They want to be surrounded by gun-free zones, rainbows, and armed guards instead of taking responsibility for their own safety. Somehow, 
This land of rugged individuals has become populated with scared children who expect to be cared for, fed, protected, and made to feel good about themselves. Here's your trophy, little one. All by government mandate. Many people seem to have no desire whatsoever to earn their keep, provide for their families, or take responsibility for their own safety. They expect the workplace to be one of sunshine and lollipops, with ample time off, equal pay for all, and don't forget, lots of kind words for everyone. Our culture is just so incredibly dependent. Freedom is terrifying to most people because it means that they and they alone are responsible for the actions that they take. An independent person succeeds or fails on his or her own merit. Independence, by its very nature, means that the possibility of failure exists and there's no trophy for failures sorry it requires a sense of adventure confidence and the ability to fail and get right back up again and it seems like these things are being bred right out of the american people and it's being helped along by fluoride drink your water brush your teeth but if you swallow that toothpaste, be sure to call the poison control people because fluoride's a poison when it's in toothpaste, but not in your water. So, what independence actually means? To be independent, by definition, is the opposite of depend dependent. And here's a whole list of definitions. So, number one, not influenced or controlled by others in matters of opinion, conduct, etc. Thinking or acting for oneself. Number two, not subject to another's authorita or jurisdiction. Autonomous. Free. Number three, not influenced by the thought or actions of others. Number four, not dependent, not depending or contingent upon something else for existence, operation, etc. Number five, not relying on another or others for aid or support. Number six, rejecting others' aid or support, refusing to be under obligation to others. Number seven, possessing a competency. So, if you are, at heart, a free person, the above is a description of your character. Maybe you read that list and realized it doesn't describe you. Well, with some hard work and a big dose of courage, it can. And here's how. You must reduce your dependence on everything that is out of your control. You must reduce your dependence on the government, the large corporations, the transportation system, money, the banking system, entities like the FDA and the USDA. All of these are marketed to us to make it seem like we can't survive without them. Those who signed the Declaration of Independence hundreds of years ago knew this was the case when Britain tried to coerce them and convince them that they needed help and governance from the other side of the ocean. Those patriots decided that there was not one single thing that England could provide for them, that they needed enough to remain under the rule of the king. Once you decide that there's nothing that you need, then the boogeymen who would control us, all lose their power. That's why nearly everything you need to do to become self-sustaining is either illegal or strongly discouraged. Milk straight from the cow, water collection, front yard vegetable gardens, carrying a firearm, 
They need you to need them. I've been saying that for years. Government is a giant scam. The government is not really made up of the elected officials that it purports. It's made up. It's made up. But mostly of people who sell their souls to huge corporations that have an interest in beneficial laws being passed and laws that would harm their businesses, shut down before they ever reach the desk of the president. As well, the supposed watchdog entities like the Food and Drug Administration and the Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are also populated by those who have been hand-picked to support corporations, no matter what the detriment to the American people whom they pretend to protect. If Congress was like NASCAR, the members would have to wear uniforms emblazoned with their sponsors. However, Washington, D.C. does not have the transparency of professional car racing. So we must guess at the sponsors of our members. We're buried under ridiculous laws with the sole purpose of generating revenue or adding the slave labor force for the, or in the for-profit prison system. We must work most of our waking hours to be able to pay for our basic necessities. We are convinced repeatedly that we must have things that our ancestors would never have considered owning, much less requiring. Hand in hand, the mega corporations and the government entities work together to keep us subservient and in our places. The corporations create products. The watchdog agencies test the products. And the government mandates an artificial need for these products. Vaccines come to mind on that one. They have most people convinced that you must follow the food pyramid, the vaccine schedule, and the rules that force us to have licenses for every darned, I would insert damned, thing that we do. We must pay for and be granted permission to feed ourselves, transport ourselves, build shelters for ourselves, unite in matrimony, and even to own pets. Yeah, when I lived in town, I had to license my dogs. Not anymore, I don't. Kiss them my ass. Yeah, and if you didn't, they took your dogs and they euthanized them. They were fuckers. Ooh, F-bomb. Early. In any case, back to this. So, like some kind of frightening author authoritarian parent, they assure us that it's for our own safety. These breaches into our independence and that we must comply or face the consequences. They ground us by taking away our licenses. They send us to our rooms that just happen to be located in for-profit prisons, Graybar Hilton. <clears throat> they don't al allow us to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Because once we taste that sweet freedom, we won't want to be under their oppressive thumbs anymore. But some of us have seen the corporate government for what it is. A bully that reigns through fear of reprisal. They hold over us these fears. We will die if we don't eat things that were inspected and approved by them. How many things have fluoride in them? Or corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, or all kinds of other nasty preservatives. We will be jailed and fined or have our children taken away from us if we don't toe the line. That's because you signed your child over when you got them a birth certificate. According to them, you no longer own them. They are not yours. We are unable to figure things out for ourselves because we are not experts. Experts are just drips under pressure, former drips under pressure. Um, and therefore, we must suppress our own judgments and bow to their far greater knowledge. <laughs> 
Uh-huh. We will die if we don't follow their expert health and nutrition advice. Uh, no. We'll be murdered by scary foreign terrorists if we don't allow the TSA to fondle our private parts and make us walk barefoot for 30 feet and perform x-rays that show us naked before we fly. Yeah, and you know what? Those scary foreign terrorists, our government created them either by training them and giving them the supplies that they need to... um, Oh, sure, they say they sell them, but no, nah, really. They give them money, and then they say, here, use that money to buy this shit from us. That way we can say you bought it from us. Yeah, or or they just go over and bomb the hell out of that country, and then those people over there are going, what the fuck did we do? We didn't start anything with you. Why the hell? You killed my mother. You killed my son. You killed my husband. You killed my wife. I'm going to take one from you. That's how terrorists are created. One way or the other, they are molded. Now, because some people fear these things and believe these tales so thoroughly that they allow the government to enforce ridiculous, unconstitutional laws for our own safety, they say, better that I give up my rights as a human being and save the world from a terrorist. You want to save the world from a terrorist? Quit going over there and creating them. That's how you save the world from a terrorist. And go after the real ones, the original ones, the ones that are creating them. Those ones in that make-believe place, that government place. Yeah, they justify, well, these agents are only doing their jobs. Heck, I've even heard people in line at the airport thank the TSA for patting them down. Yeah, well, darn it all. You know, it's really sad when a grope and tickle from the TSA brigade is your thrill of the day. Holy crap. Our government strives to create in its citizens a dependency. They want us to feel as though we actually can't survive without them. But you know what? We created them. We can take them out. Now there's a name for this. It's called the Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome is a psychological term that is co- was coined after a six-day siege at a bank in Stockholm, Sweden. The four hostages actually began to feel affection, even love, for their captors. The phrase was, was reported to have been coined by criminologist and and psychiatrist Niles Bergerot, is that how you say that? Psychiatrist Dr. Frank Ochberg was intrigued by the phenomenon and went on to define the syndrome for the FBI and Scotland Yard in the 1970s. His criteria included the following. First, people would experience something terrifying that just comes at them out of the blue, and they are certain that they are going to die. Then they experience a type of inf- infantilization where like a child they are unable to eat speak or go to the toilet without permission kind of like school raise your hand no you may not hold it Uh, I had a teacher that was an asshole like that some acts of kindness such as being given food prompt a primitive gratitude for the gift of life he explains And then the hostages experience a powerful, primitive, positive feeling towards their captor. They are in denial that this is the person who put them in that situation. In their mind, they think this is the person who's going to let them live. And it's basically both of them. Now, the Stockholm Syndrome is defined as a feeling of trust or affection felt in certain cases of kidnapping or hostage taking by a victim toward a captor. So does this sound familiar? Here's how the government does it. The corporate system is constructed around making us feel as though we need what they are offering. They want us to believe that we need their expertise, their handouts, their approvals, and their protection. They want us to feel that we are not capable of making our own decisions without their input. 
once they create this insecurity in you, then you have become their slave, which is what sir means. S-I-R, slave I remain. Stop saying it, please. You must work almost nonstop to be able to afford the lifestyle they tell you to have. Your home must meet their standards. Your dependence upon the grid is absolute, and you must never, ever partake of food that has not passed their approval process. You should call the experts to protect you via 911, as opposed to taking care of your own security. Your children must be supervised constantly, unable to grow and seek adventures like reliving Little Rascals episodes. <laughs> in order to create the next generation of adults who submit without even realizing that they are doing so. When it's put like that, you can see how absolutely ridiculous it is, right? So let's take food for example. Historically, it near, um, nearly every takeover of a modern world, food was involved. Think of communist China in the early 1960s or the Hold the morrow, for example. Examples. What is hold the morrow? No. Hold the holodomor. Whatever the hell that is. H O L O D O M O R. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Ah, oh, my education system. Kicking in. Gonna have to look that one up. So the government took control of the farms for the good of the people. And they controlled all the food. Every single bite. If you complied, you ate. If you rebelled, you starved. Back 100 years ago, people drank milk. You got it from cows as opposed to the store. Now the substance that they drink is called raw milk, and it's the subject of taboos and warnings and legal loopholes that must be jumped through. It's a million times easier to purchase a known carcinogen cigarettes, or a mood-altering substance, alcohol, than it is to get fresh, creamy milk from a cow and drink it. We've been brainwashed into believing our milk must be heated to the point that the good bacteria is exterminated and then approved by the USDA before we're able to drink it. Milk is controlled like a dangerous level one narcotic. Actually, to give you a quick little Okay, let me finish reading this sentence because she goes on. Uh, for crying out loud, but pasteurized milk from the store, which often originates from cows that have been given recombinant bovine growth hormones and antibiotics, is perfectly fine. It's USDA approved. Did you know that if a tanker truck hauling milk rolls over on the highway and spills its load, into the ditches along the highway, it is considered, considered a hazardous waste spill and they have to come in and remove all of the topsoil and replace it. I know this because I used to help some guys that worked wreckers back in the day and uh, yeah, they went out on one of those that before they could even move the tank tanker truck they had to clean up all the contaminated soil. Craziness. EPA. Now, in a million small ways, folks are being brainwashed that we require permission to do nearly everything. Think of an abusive relationship. Because our relationship with the government is a classic example of such thing. The abuser says things like this to the victim. You'd never survive without me. You obviously need me to take care of you because you aren't smart enough to take care of yourself. Why did you do that without my permission? Now you're going to be punished. You know I'm doing this for your own good. Yeah, I heard that one. Or my dad's famous one. This is going to hurt me more than it does you. Bullshit! I call bullshit lest you strain your shoulder because that belt hurts awful bad. Yeah. <clears throat> the abuser keeps track of your time. 
makes you account for your earnings, seizes your personal belongings, coerces you into doing things that you don't want to do, and harshly discourages any vestiges of independence. Because if you are independent, they have lost control of you. Compliance is rewarded. Rebellion is punished. But is it really rebellion? Is it really? In their eyes, it is. So let the TSA pat you down. You're allowed to travel. Refuse to be groped and you lose the price of your plane ticket and your opportunity to go to your cousin's wedding by air. Sell all homemade edible products that hasn't been inspected and approved by local officials and they will fine your business out of existence. Not only this, but occasionally we're allowed to feel we're independent and do these things. And we pay extra for the privileges of living our lives, traveling, and earning a living. But there is something that you can do. Whether you call it freedom, or liberty, or sovereignty, or self-governance, the point remains the same. If you're reading this, you probably want to determine your own life whether result is a success or failure. You want to have control over your ability to live, truly live, and not merely exist as a slave to the powers that be. In other words, you don't have to earn a living because you're already living. You should not have to earn something you've already got. There is actually something we can do. We can say no. Or hell no. We can be the squeaky wheel. We can be louder than those dependent, noisy individuals who want to throw away liberty. We can. You may feel like you aren't in the right place in life to declare your independence. Perhaps you don't have a room to raise your own food or perhaps you have a physical handicap that bars you from living 30 miles from civilization in a yurt located down a dirt road, over a creek, and in the woods. Maybe it's all you can do financially to keep the refrigerator full of groceries for the week. But whatever you are right now, that's okay. Wherever you are, know that every single person, even the very freest person you know, started at a place that was less free than where they are right now. The most important thing is to begin to recognize the chains that are on you so that you can begin link by link to break them. So how do you break free of the life that nearly every single person around you lives? It's simple yet so complicated. So here it is. The ultimate act of insurrection. You have to need less. When you need less, you have less to fear. Now, every year when I write about this topic, a few people come out of the woodwork to claim, it's not enough. Well, not everyone is a warrior. But taking steps to become freer than you were the day before is a cause for celebration. It is simply reality that most of us cannot make a stand in every single aspect of our lives. We have children that could be taken away from us. We have homes that could be seized. We fear being imprisoned in a cage. I get that, truly. I don't want to lose my daughter or my home or be thrown in jail either. The folks in control have done their job in that respect. But we can work around it. We can refuse to eat the poisoned apple that they graciously hand us. We can stop sending our kids to public schools for free education, which it's not free. Have you seen the frickin' lists and what it costs? It's not free. We can all stop purchasing processed food that originated as the bastard child of factory farming and a chemistry project. We can refuse to shop at Walmart, 
Kmart, or any of those corporate discount stores that have their products manufactured in sweatshops overseas so they can undercut the mom-and-pop stores right out of business. That's not the only way they undercut, but they buy in bulk so they get a better price break so they can undercut. That's another way. <clears throat> now, I raise vegetables. I do. I collect rainwater. I do. I have things repaired instead of replaced. I don't pay interest to the banks. Heck, I don't even um, leave money in the bank if I can help it, which I have just enough in there to cover bills every month. That's just enough. 911 is not my default for home security. I don't have Obamacare or cable TV, a maxed out credit card, or a home phone. I live my life quietly and without many of the things that others consider necessities. I live frugally, so I don't have to sell the majority of the hours in my day for enough money to survive the other days. In other words, you should live a life that you don't ha have to, want to, need to take a vacation from. Every single day, I strive to reduce my vulnerability to coercion because the less I need, the more difficult I am to manipulate. And you? You don't need this stuff that they're offering either. So is there, or there is so much that you can do to free yourself from them. You have the natural human right to be free. This freedom is also supposed to be protected by our Constitution, which gets undermined on a regular basis. So if you aren't free, then revolution is your duty. Although I would express that as evolution, because a revolution is just starting at a point, going all the way around, and ending up at the same point you started at. You want an evolution. Part of the power that the government holds over people is the fact that they hold the keys to the stuff we need. Look at Venezuela, where the government controls access to food, water, and electricity. True independence is to not need the stuff they have. When there is nothing that you require enough to submit, then coercing you becomes much more difficult. So make your life a declaration of independence. And here are 20 ways to make yourself less dependent on the whims of the economy, the government, the corporate interests. And don't worry if they seem impractical to you. They may not all be possible right this moment. Pick one and act on it. Then another. Every journey begins with the decision to start the trip. So number one. Question absolutely everything you hear on the news. Always be skeptical. All major media goes back to just a few conglomerates. And the spews, or as she says, news, is a propaganda ploy to help the rich get richer and the powerful remain in power. The media can make or break a candidate with unholy zeal in less than a week. These people, and others like them, are the ones that decide what the rest of us get to see. Number two, call out the media. When you see coverage that is clearly biased, take a moment to call out the media about it. Take the time to comment on mainstream media websites and point out the unbalanced coverage. If you use social media, share this information and post on the media's outlet's social media pages as well. Number three, get out of the banking system. By opting to unbank or underbank, there is a limit to what can be easily stolen from you. When you have physical control of your financial assets, you are not at a high risk of losing those assets and therefore less likely to be dependent on the system. Also remember what happened to the account holders in Cyprus. Number four, educate others. 
at the very high risk of people thinking you're crazy. Uh, I relish in my craziness. It's important to let people know why you do what you do. If you are an anti-Monsanto activist, teach others about the dangers of GMOs. And I tell you what, I did some country cruising in the last couple of weeks. There are lots of farms out there that planted corn that are not genetically modified to tolerate herbicides. There's more and more fields showing up out here that are going away from GMO Roundup Ready corn. Now, if you object to a municipal policy, speak at a town meeting or send a letter to the editor of your local paper. Be calm and present intelligent arguments. Number five, get others involved in the fight. For example, if you're fighting with the city council that wants to rip out the vegetables growing in your front yard, let your friends and neighbors know. Post a notice at the grocery store and write a letter to the editor. When injustice occurs, use the power of social media to spread awareness. Often, a public outcry is what is necessary to get the authorities to back down. Now, remember the case of Brandon Robb, the veteran who was kidnapped and taken to a mental hospital for things he posted on Facebook? He was not charged, but he was detained in a psych ward involuntarily. His friends and family immediately mobilized and spread the videos of his arrest all over the Internet. It snowballed. An alternative media picked it up. Soon he was released, and all because of a grassroots and social media campaign to bring the injustice to light. So shine a light on it, people. And I tell you what, there was a couple of years there where I had a garden in my front yard when I still lived in town, and it was way cool. People loved it. Neighbors used to send their kids down to pick produce. Pictures of it wound up in the newspaper as a guess whose front yard this is. And now there's lots of other people in, oh, back in town that are doing that because that's the only yard that's big enough and gets enough sunlight to be able to grow their vegetables. It's kind of cool. Number six, grow your own food. Every single seed that you plant is a revolutionary act. Every bit of food that you don't have to purchase from the grocery store is a battle cry for your personal independence. When you educate yourself and others about big food, big agra, and the food safety sellouts at the FDA and USDA, you will clearly see that we are alone in our fight or yeah, that we are alone in our fight for healthy, nutritious foods. Number 7. Take control of your health. It is imperative that you not blindly trust the medical establishment. Many members of this establishment are merely prostitutes for their pimp, Big Pharma. Millions of children are given powerful psychotropic drugs to help them fit into the neat little classroom boxes. And the numbers are growing every day. Americans spent half a trillion, that's a T, half a trillion dollars on psychiatric drugs in 2013. And the booming industry is only getting bigger. So you have the right to weigh the risks and benefits of a suggested medical treatment and seek second and third opinions before making a medical decision. Number eight, refuse to comply. If you know your natural rights, which are guaranteed under the Constitution and its amendments, okay, they're not guaranteed, they are stipulated that here you shall not pass, the old Gandalf thing, then it makes it much harder for authorities to bully you. You don't have to let them search your home without a warrant. You don't have to answer questions. You don't have to comply with laws that are in conflict with the Constitution. Number nine. Don't overlook the little things. Governments like to chip away at rights a tiny bit at a time until one day you wake up and realize that all of those little things added up to a really big thing. 
It's like the frogs sitting in a pan of water, incrementally turning the temperature up, and the frogs don't notice it. Today, the bulk, of, the bulk purchase of ammo might be limited. Tomorrow, you might not be able to buy it at all. Today, home births might be subject to a set of rules. Tomorrow, those rules might be expanded to the point that the birth of your child is totally legislated. Number 10. Embrace your right to bear arms. Be responsible for your own safety and security. Hi, Jay. My kids are here. <laughs> Number 11. Don't be in debt. No one can be free if they are in debt. If you are in debt, you are forced to work in whatever conditions are present for whatever amount is offered, complying with whatever criteria is necessary to keep your job in order to pay your debt or face penalties. As well, the high interest rates that you pay only serve to make the bankers more wealthy. Instead of borrowing, save until you can afford something or realize that you could actually afford it. You wouldn't need to borrow money if you have it. Number 12. Be prepared for disaster. Have enough food, water, and supplies to take care of your family in the event of a natural disaster. Don't expect FEMA to take care of you. Number 13, that was number 12, by the way. Number 13, be involved in your children's education. For some, this means homeschooling or unschooling. And for others, this means being on top of what they're learning in the formal school setting. Join the PTA and actively volunteer if your child goes to school. Be an advocate for your child and insist that teachers teach. If your child goes to school, Supplement this at home with discourse about current events and outings that help them learn about the world around them. Number 14. Be the squeaky wheel. If you see something wrong, don't just ignore it. Say something about it. And keep saying something until it changes. Whether this is some process that infringes on your privacy, or a job requirement that impedes your health, or another injustice, or pursue it resent relentlessly. Ask questions publicly, write letters, and use social media to bring pressure to encourage a change. Number 15. Buy locally. Support local small businesses to help others who are fighting for independence from the system. You might pay a little bit more, than what you would at the big box stores, but the only people benefiting from your purchases made at the corporate stores are those with the six-figure annual bonuses. Number 16. Develop multiple streams of income. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Figure out several ways to bring in income. You're less entangled in the system and not subject to corporate whims. If one business fails or becomes subject to regulations that make it no longer worthwhile, you're forced to comply just to keep a roof over your head. Number 17. Say thanks, but no thanks. There's no such thing as a benevolent handout. Nearly anything offered for free, particularly by the government entity, has strings attached. Maybe there's a handy-dandy registration form that you need to fill out. Or you might be influenced to vote a certain way just to keep the freebies coming. You might have to pee in a cup every two weeks. Perhaps one day, you'll need to have a microchip embedded in your hand. Either way, by accepting handouts from those in authority, you become beholden to them or you need them, and someone who is free is neither beholden nor needy. Number 18. Collect water. Either harvest it with rain barrels, store it in a cistern, or create a source 
for it on your property, such as digging a well, for example, because water is life. Number 19. Don't take the easy road. Power-hungry entities like to seduce people with simplicity. If you just sign this paper, it will be much easier, they say. This chip is for your convenience, they tell you. By giving up this, it lets us take care of you and you will be much safer. Yeah, the easy road only gets you to Slave Street a lot faster. So take the difficult road and be responsible for yourself. Don't take shortcuts that, compr that compromise your beliefs. Go to court to fight a ticket. Read the laws and defend yourself. And finally, number 20. Know that anything you give up, you will never get back. The way you lead your life every single day can be a personal declaration of independence. We don't have to bow our heads in submission. We don't have to live like wage slaves and bury ourselves even deeper in debt. We don't have to hate our neighbors and fight on the internet with people with whom we've never met. We don't have to be like everyone else. We can be different than today's norm. We can be kinder. We can be independent. And maybe, just maybe, we can teach others by our example, by refusing to concede your natural rights quietly and resolutely you are performing an act of revolution this only requires one thing your consistent determination not to be infringed upon make that decision today and you will really have something to celebrate on Independence Day so go ahead be free That was long, but it was well worth it, at least to me. I really, and I, I got to save this one because I really like that one. Yes. What's that? What kind of apron are you needing to have made? Okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. I'm catching up on the chat here. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, woman accused of stabbing husband and his motorcycle? Wow. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> yeah, first you do have to have a pot to piss in. Uh, and yeah, I can make a basket. And I could probably make you an apron too, but that doesn't mean I will. <laughs> but I can. Okay. I'm going to share this over here on this effing site, and then I'm going to get to the one that Cowboy Tech shared over here on the effing site. This was an excellent read. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who, where was it? Oh, I saw that on Twitter. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah from uh, Zero Hedge posted it on Twitter. So, okay. We'll do this one and that one and that one. Okay, come on. Come on, Zero Hedge. Don't be a poo-poo head. Okay. So while that is trying to post over here on the Effen site, which it could possibly be because my Opera browser, because Opera is being weird lately. So Cowboy Tech posted this um, yesterday over on the Effen site, Freedoms Network. Uh, the 11 step plan of cultural subversion. It's the Frankfurt School and it has 11 objectives to destroy society or create a new world order. United Nations Agenda 2030. Now, it used to be um, Agenda for the 21st Century, and now they've moved it back for to 2030. So, are we making progress? I don't know. 
So, number one, the creation of racism offenses. Yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. Number two, continual change to create confusion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number three, teaching uh, the teaching of sex and homosexuality to children. Number four, the undermining of schools and teachers' authority. Number five, huge immigration to destroy identity. Number six, the promotion of excessive drinking. Number seven, emptying of churches. Okay, see, I don't have a problem with emptying of churches because that's another one of those organizations that I just, organized religion just really ticks me off. Number eight, an unreliable legal system with bias against victims of crime. Number nine, dependence on the state or state benefits. Number 10, control and dumbing down of media. And finally, number 11, uh, encouraging the breakdown of the family. And so far, I think they've pretty much covered all of those bases. Yes, I do. So, let me see if that finally posted up here. It is still trying to do its thing. Come on. Post already. I may just have to redo it. Okay, so, I have a couple other, oh crap, it's because I got logged out, that's why. Damn it, no wonder it wouldn't let me post. Dippy thing. Okay. Hey, wanna taco? You posted it. <clears throat> I'm. I apparently did not see it. Rob works. You're gonna have to repost so I can see what that apron looks like. I just usually wear a really big T-shirt and just pull it out and just carry the eggs and yeah. That's how I roll. Okay. Let's see if it'll post now. Don't be giving me. Yay! It's working. So see, that's what it was. I got logged out. Bummer, dude. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need a drink. Okay. So, where do I want to go? Do I want to go with the herd mentality? Let me see how long that one is. Uh, yeah. I think I'll go with that one next. Okay, so this is a blog over on media.com, medium.com, by Dan Sanchez. And uh, it's called The Herd Mind, The Ascension of the State in the Stampede of War. Ooh. So, Randolph Bourne famously wrote, War is the Health of the State. And this has long been the byword for anti-war, anti-state libertarians, and rightly so. But born did not mean exactly what most libertarians take this phrase to mean. To understand the maxim's original meaning as Bourne used it in his great unfinished essay, The State, one must understand his distinctions among three concepts that are conflated, such as country, state, and government. For born, a country or nation is a group of individuals bound together by cultural affinity. A state is a country nation collectively mobilized for attack or protection. As he distinguished between the two, a country is a concept of peace, of tolerance, of living and letting live, but state is essentially a concept of power, of competition, and it signifies a group in its aggressive aspects. And government, according to Bourne, is the machinery by which the nation organized as a state carries out the state functions and a framework of the administration of laws and the carrying out of the public force. So what libertarians commonly refer to as the state, Bourne termed the government instead. So the way libertarians often interpret his famous um, aphorism um, is what Bourne would have expressed if he had written, war is the health of the government, 
which is also happens to be true. But it's not what he meant. For Born, the state is not a distinct ruling body subsisting extractively on the ruled, i.e. a gang of thieves writ large, as a great Murray Rothbard um, incisively conceived it, rather he saw it as a certain orientation of a whole people, a spiritual phenomenon pervading an entire population that em animates and empowers such a ruling body. Or as Bourne expressed it, which I hope it's clearer than that because that was clear as mud, Government is the idea of the state put into practical operation in the hands of definite, concrete, fallible men. It is the visible sign of the invisible grace. It is the word made flesh, and it has nece necessarily the limitations inherent in all practicality. Government is the only form in which we can envisage really envisage the state but it is by no means identical with it that the state is a mystical concept is something that must never be forgotten in the glamour or its glamour and its significance linger behind the framework of government and direct its activities so in peacetime born explained the state is largely relegated to the background individuals are then more concerned with their own affairs and purposes. But during the build-up to war, and especially following its breakout, the foreign enemy looms large in the public imagination. Hence, the country is overtaken by war fever and develops what Garrett Garrett called a complex of vaunt, uh, vaunting and fear. So this hybrid mania of boastful belligerence and timorous terror or fight or flight causes a populace to regress from a civilization to a herd and the people seek safety in numbers in a multiple or a multitude of unified uh, single purpose or a great end and directed by a single agency the very dance of individuals gives way to the uniform huddle and stampede of the unitary drove with the government as the drover or as Bourne wrote the state is the organization of the herd to act offensively or defensively against another herd similarly similarly organized and in wartime the mystical concept of the state comes into its own as the herd sense becomes dominant in the country and the aggressive aspects of the group come to fore. This is what Bourne meant by war is the health of the state. The dictum speaks of the flourishing of an ideal and the resulting transformation of a whole society, not merely the ag aggrandizement of a government. Yet war is also the health of the government which is the single directing agency to whose banner the state-minded masses flock under the perceived um, exigencies of war. Good God, Gertie. This guy's using words I haven't used in forever. <laughs> Lord, some of them I've never used until now. So, proceed to allow them, they proceed to allow themselves to be regimented, coerced, deranged in all environments of their lives, and turned into a solid manufactory of destruction toward whatever other people may have. In the appointed scheme of things, come within with the range of government's disappropriation. Yeah, disapprobation, there you go. The citizen throw off his contempt and indifference to government, identifies himself with its purpose, revives all his military memories and symbols, and the state once more walks an august presence through the imaginations of men. So economically, this means that the manpower and resources of the country undergo mobilization. A vast redirection away from the provision of individual consumer wants 
and toward the all-important war effort. In this way, too, the government swells in power and grandeur. As the consumer-directed market economy is supplement or supplanted by the government-directed war economy, or even war socialism. In a fever of war, the individual will is the individual will is sacrificed for the general will, which ostensibly expresses itself through the government. Individuals renounce their identities for the sake of uniting Voltron-like into a state, like the Gestalt Leviathan pictured on the cover of Thomas Hobbes' book by that name. Or as Bourne put it, war sends the current of purpose and activity flowing down to the lowest levels of the herd and to its remote branches. All the activities of society are linked together as fast as possible to this central purpose of making a military offensive or military defense, and the state becomes what in peacetime it has vague, vainly struggled to become, the inexorable arbiter and determinant of men's businesses and attitudes and opinions. So the herd is mobilized not only against the foreign foe, but against any dissidents within the group who resists assimilation into the Borg-like hive or herd mind, and refuse to join the swarm or stampede into war. In other words, against enemies foreign and domestic. Or, as Bourne said, the state is a jealous god and will brook no rivals. Its sovereignty must pervade everyone and all feeling must run into the stereotyped forms of romantic patriotic military militarism, which is the traditional expression of the state herd feeling. In this great herd machinery, dissent is like sand in the bearings. The state ideal is primarily a sort of blind animal pushed toward military unity. Any interference with that unity turns the whole vast impulse towards crushing it. Now the state crushes dissent through government policies restricting civil liberties, but also through private citizens acting as amateur agents of the government, who berate skeptics into silence, report critics to the authorities for disloyalty, or even take the security of herd and homeland into their own violent hands. Remember that in Bourne's framework, the government is by no means identical with the state. As such, the state can animate a private citizen even more than it does an office holder. Or as Bourne remarked, in every country, we have seen groups that were more loyal than the king, more patriotic than the government. The, um, da, 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 da. okay, it's getting into some weirdness here. Or are patrioteers in America, and these groups exist to keep the steering wheel of the state straight, and they prevent the nation from ever veering very far from the state ideal. Now, there was other things in there, but it's like, really? I am not going to try and sprain my tongue reading those. <laughs> so, this is extremely apt description of Fox News types who castigate Barack Obama for his lack of patriotism and the insufferency of his war-making. The spirit of the state dwells within Sean Hannity, even more so than it dwells within the President of the United States. What is ironic is that the war-drumming jingo like Hannity usually imagines himself a paragon of manhood. Yet his dull, stampeding herd mindset marks him as less of a man and more of a beast. Randolph Bourne was not a libertarian, but a dissident progressive. Still, we libertarians can learn a great deal from him. For instance, perhaps our terminology as penetrating and illuminating as it is, has led us to focus too much on the herdsmen in office who drive, shear, milk, and butcher us, 
and not enough on the more fundamental problem. Our society's bovine propensity to become a manipulate, uh, manipulable herd in the first place, especially when spooked. Occasionally, thinking in terms of Born's type, uh, typology can be a useful corrective in this regard. Dan Sanchez, honey, did you whip out your thesaurus? Seriously? I just got to put that out there. Because good Lord Almighty. Oh, well. Born's terminology anal and analysis also shed light on the all-important question of how to achieve liberation. The state lives in the minds of the government's victims. Simply overthrowing a government will only spook the herd even worse. The state will not only survive such an overthrow, but it will likely even feed off of it, as the panicked herd acts even more herd-like in the crisis, granting new herdsmen even more tyrannical power than the old ones. The state is a state of mind. It is the herd mindset itself. As such, it can only be overthrown in the battleground of the mind. Once the state is spiritually dethroned and the populace fully transfigures from herd to civilization, the government, like a shepherd without a flock, will no longer even merit its designation. It will then merely be a heavily armed, but even more heavily outnumbered gang of rustlers writ small. Accomplishing this becomes even more urgent as Americans are driven into even ever more calamitous wars. Even after electing a peace candidate as president. It's increasingly apparent that breaking the spell of the state that turns men into beasts may be the only way we can avoid being driven into self-destruction by alarmist warmongers and their terrorist symbiotes like buffalo being stampeded off a cliff by herd-spooking hunters. Okay, Dan Sanchez, that was really pretty interesting, but wow, god dang, I'm going to have to look some of those words up later. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's just funnier than hell. Facebook flags Declaration of Independence as hate speech. Well, it is hate speech to the leeches that be. Okay. Let me put this over on this effing site as well. And then I'm going to go to the pig, because I don't know about you guys, but wow, I've had enough cereal for a while. Seriously. I have. It's like, oy. So, let's go check out the pig, shall we? Oh, and yeah, uh, did they, that gal that, or whoever it was that climbed on the Statue of Liberty, I saw you guys chatting about it, but I was also checking a few other things out. They finally got her and got her down and all that other fun crap, or... I'm just curious. I had that link open, and then I saw you guys chatting about it, and it's like, eh, eh. Okay. Over here on PIGazette.com, word of the day is Independence Day. It is a noun. It's the day we commemor commemorate a world-changing moment when 56 rugged American individuals gave a Brit sovereign the finger with the immortal words, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Remember, what comes right after that? That all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. You got to remember that whole bit. They are all. Doesn't mean you're going to have equal results either. Just saying. In the quotable quotes section, more people have married Kardashians and have contracted the Ebola virus. That's from Julie Chang on KTTV, Los Angeles Entertainment News, babe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's probably true. Okay. <coughs> Let's see. Okay, they have a conundrum here. So let's check this out, shall we? The definition of the word conundrum is something that is puzzling or confusing. Free people are not equal. Equal people are not free. This, uh, think this one over and over until it makes sense. Now a gun is like a parachute. If you need one and don't have one, you'll probably never need one again. That is true. That is true. So here are six conundrums of socialism in the United States of America. Number one, America is capitalist and greedy, yet half of the population is subsidized. Mm -hmm. Number two, half of the population is subsidized, yet they think that they are victims. Number three, they think they are victims, yet their representatives run the government. Number four, their representatives run the government, yet the poor keep getting poorer. Number five, the poor keep getting poorer, yet they have things that people in other countries only dream about. And number six, they have things that people in other countries only dream about, and yet they want America to be more like those other countries. Think about it pretty much sums up the USA in the 21st century and makes you wonder who's doing the math. So these three short sentences tell you a lot about the direction of our current government and the cultural environment. Number one, we are advised to not judge all Muslims by the acts of a few lunatics, but we are encouraged to judge all gun owners by the actions of a few lunatics. Funny how that works. Number two, seems we constantly hear about how Social Security is going to run out of money, but we never hear about welfare or food stamps running out of money. What's interesting is the first group worked for their money, but the second didn't. And last but not least, number three, why are we cutting benefits for our veterans, no pay raises for our military, and cutting our army to a level lower than before World War II, but we're not stopping the payment or benefits to illegal aliens. Excellent questions, all three. I think they are games that are being played. They're not, and actually, they may be cutting the benefits to the actual boots on the ground people, but they're not cutting military spending. Okay. This date in history, the 4th of July, 1776. On this legendary day, 56 rugged American individuals gave the British pain in the butt King George III the finger by declaring their independence. And this date in history, the 4th of July, 1796, 20 years after the great signing, first American De Independence Day celebration. Took them 20 years to get that shit figured out. Hmm... And they have a very long um, diatribe, ah, by Porcus. 4th of July is not just a day for Americans because being an American is not merely a little checkbox on an application. It is truly a universal state of mind of man's God-given rights to freedom and liberty. In America, you're free to climb to the top of the ladder or free to be stupid and fail. Well, yeah. Yep, that's true. Thank you, Porcus. Go on. Okay, go on over to PIGazette.com. They got all kinds of other fun stuff going on over here. I don't know that I can... That's a, that's a long... Should I do the... Seeing as how it's a fourth, I probably ought to. I only got a half hour left, so let's see if I can get through this. So, <clears throat> July the 4th is the day that we remember that this nation is founded on the bedrock called inalienable individual liberty. It's the day we remember America, America's core tenet. 
Each individual is born with inalienable rights that no government, no group, no other individual has the right to infringe. It's the day we pause to honor the inalienable individual liberties that sets America apart from all other nations. Okay, it squiggles and lines on paper. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And from what I understand, that originally said um, the ownership of property, but I could be wrong. July 4th is the day that we stop to pay homage to that classically American creation, the rugged individual. By saluting the courage and wisdom of 56 classically American individuals who in 1776 wrote a timeless document called the Declaration of Independence. This legendary declaration is an exceptional document whose soaring prose still inspires us. On this day, we honor these 56 rugged individuals for drawing the proverbial line in the sand and telling King George, listen up and listen good, sporty. You're no better than we are, and we're done letting you push us around. So if you don't knock the crap off, right damn now, we're going to kick your royal punk butt. Oh, come on. Ass. Come on. It's popular to lionize and or denigrate those legendary individuals whom we call the Founding Fathers. They deserve to be honored for what they accomplished. However, they were merely mortal men with the same combination of virtues and vices that are the hallmark of being human. They, were perfection they weren't perfection personified, but they managed to rise above themselves to create something that has, so far, stood the test of time. Now, I'm willing to be so bold as to call these founding fathers picksters, because they were, like you and I, fed up with the bloated nanny state that swung wildly between ignoring the colonies and trying to suffocate their liberty with brute force. They were tired of a nanny state that perpetuated such assaults on their liberty as the Townsend Acts and the Intolerable Acts, which were enacted without their participation and used to bend the American colonists to the nanny state's will. They were tired of being subjected to and subjugated by that distant nanny state's monopoly on the use of force. They were fed up with the nanny state's relentless assault on their liberty. Eventually, these founding father pigsters decided to do something about the utterly unacceptable situation. Under a false start under the Articles of Confederation in 1781, which did little more than spread chaos, these exceptional men created something that came this close to perfection. The United States of America, they created a nation of, by, and for those rugged individuals who had sought out the opportunity that the New World offered. They built the kind of nation that gave these rugged, utterly American individuals the opportunity to see how far their talents, intellect, and energy could take them without the nanny state breathing down their neck. Now, these visionary nation builders crafted a constitution in 1787 that elevated inalienable individual liberty to its rightful place, beyond the suffocated grasp of the nanny state. Deliberately, explicitly, they wrote a constitution that strictly limited the power of the nanny state to intrude upon the inalienable individual liberties of those rugged, sovereign individuals. They build a new nation wherein the national government was a small isolated island surrounded by an ocean of inalienable individual liberty. They forged a new kind of government that knew its place and didn't interfere with sovereign individuals' lives, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Pig is a little more or is more than a little smug about the fact that in their time, those 56 courageous Americans were the ultimate politically incorrect dudes. That's got to be a rousing amen from the American congregation. So did we call the founding fathers politically incorrect? 
you better believe it. For example, limited government. Swimming against the authoritarian tide, the Founding Fathers promoted and ultimately established a government that was, in essence, the agent of a sovereign people. The sole function of this limited government maximize the inalienable in liberty of the individual it served. Now, individual liberty, these exceptional individuals set individual liberty above beyond the reach of the government. They defied conventional wisdom and prevailing political phys uh, philosophy by stating that our liberty is not a gift from government, but is, in fact, each individual's birthright. Respect for authority. When it came to royalty, they were politically incorrect with the vengeance. They defied a king. They defied his tax collectors. They defied the most powerful military force on earth. This is mind-boggling bog political incorrectness. So what makes their achievement remarkable is that they were mere mortals. They were flawed individuals who, working together, managed to promulgate a government based on a lofty, untested idea, inalienable individual liberty. Unable to implement these, this ideal in their own lives, they nevertheless dared to build a new form of government based on this politically incorrect concept. So these founding fathers, picksters all, gave America all the necessary tools to create a new kind of nation, one where the government knew its rightful place. It wasn't perfect, but it was close enough, and it should have worked. So what the hell went so wrong that we got trapped in this shadow of its founding glory? How did we stray so far from the founding vision of a great American nan to a great American nanny state that has turned the tables on sovereign individuals? In this 18th year of the 21st century, that small island of government surrounded by an ocean of inalienable individual liberty has been transformed. Today, that small, constantly shrinking island is what remains of our inalienable individual liberty. And that ocean that surrounds it is a ravenous nanny state that wants to swallow the last shred of our freedom. The American that allowed rugged, hard-working individuals to achieve their dream and enjoy the fruits of their labor is gone. In its place, we have the nanny state that punishes those hard-working achievers by stealing the fruits of their labor and giving it away to a clamoring army of parasites. Hard work and self-reliance are in disrepute and in their place, need reign supreme. Instead of getting out of the way and letting each sovereign individual carve out his piece of his American dream, we have a nanny state that pays farmers not to grow crops and intrudes on the marketplace with price supports. We have a nanny state that micromanages business owners' ability to hire, fire, set working conditions for and determine the proper pay for his, her, his, her, or its employees. The Founding Fathers America, where our government knew its place, is a distant memory. Today, the elected tormentors give themselves more power with each passing day and do their utmost to enslave America's besieged, rugged individuals. We've strayed so far from that Founding Fathers America that even VRWC clowns who give lip service to inalienable individual liberty get it wrong. We begin from the false premise that the United States Constitution explicitly defines our liberty. When it comes to inalienable liberty, their question is bass backwards. They ask, where, are, where in the Constitution does it give an individual the right to? And the proper question, the liberty-minded question is, where does the Constitution give the nanny state the power to intrude on that inalienable liberty? The nation that our founding fathers created has, in short, become remarkably similar to the nanny state that provoked our founding fathers in the first place. 
the great American nanny state, is as willing to trample our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness as King George and his minions. The great American nanny state is as eager to bend us all to its will as the Brits were back in the day. Intolerable acts? Well, let me, let me name a few, like Affirmative Action, Americans with Disabilities Act, Campaign Refinance Reform, Social Security, the FCC, Department of Education, FDA, EPA, Eminent Domain, Hate Crime Laws, Smoking Bans, a Death Tax, Social Engineering through Draconian Tax Policies, Obamacare, plus the border-jumping scumbag coddling bills of 1965 and 1986. <coughs> That's just a few of the intolerable acts that would have our Founding Fathers updating the Declaration of Independence. You forgot IRS and the tax code. Shame on you, Porcus. Our Founding Fathers created the first nation in which a sovereign individual's inalienable rights reign supreme. It's time for each and every sovereign American individual to rededicate himself to this uniquely American principle. It's time to return to inalienable individual liberty and its corollary individual accountability. It's time for each and every sovereign American individual to demand that our elected tormentors get back to basics. It's time for each and every sovereign American individual to demand the restoration of America's founding principles. This week we honor the Founding Fathers for their willingness to defy those most powerful, the most powerful nation in the world and give its reigning monarch the finger. We need to seize this opportunity to take a moment to ponder how far America has strayed from the path of sovereign individualism and inalienable individual liberty. We need to take stock of ourselves and start looking for a road back to the Founding Fathers' vision of America. We've lost something essential to our liberty, and I, for one, want it back. So at this very moment, our men and women in uniform are risking, sacrificing their lives to defend our liberty. Okay, in a bankster's war. The least we can do is make damn sure that the liberty they are defending is worthy of their efforts, their courage, and their sacrifice. It's time for us to mount an equally courageous, equally determined fight to restore our nation's liberty here on the home front. In the 242 years that followed this singular moment in human history, the nation that conceived, they conceived at such great personal peril has lost its way. Our founding fathers and their timeless principles are politically incorrect again. If the Founding Fathers were alive today, they would be horrified by what their successors have done with the liberty they risked everything to create. They would be outraged by a nanny state that steals an achiever's rightful property and gives it to parasites. They would be outraged that the elected tormentors don't even give lip service to the inalienable individual liberty that was established at such a high price. They would be outraged that the nation they built upon the bedrock of inalienable individual liberty has devolved into a neo-socialist blight. They would stand as one and reject this 21st century America with its class warfare privileged minorities, and parasite coddling. The Founding Fathers are, regrettably, long gone, and they're never coming back. But we can borrow a page from their playbook and seize the moment in the same politically incorrect spirit. We can demand to end the groupthink, parasite coddling, and class warfare. We can demand that our elected tormentors get back to basics as established by our Founding Fathers. If all else fails, we can find a 21st century Thomas Jefferson and get him started on that 21st century Declaration of Independence. There's nothing wrong with the Founding Fathers' original concept. It's the long-term execution that got us where we are. So if at first 
You don't succeed. Try, try again. What's that? What, 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 what? Um, yeah, yeah, Grimmy. Who yawned? I don't know who yawned. <laughs> Was it me? Oops. Okay, very poor writers. You know, mm, mm, I think there were some people involved in that that really, you know, there were an awful lot of different uh, personalities, a lot of different mindsets going on during that time frame. And I can't really speak for any of the founding fathers. But, and I know interpretations, there's an awful lot. It's a living document or it's a dead document. It depends on how you want to look at it. Um, you know, there's there's some people that say, oh, the Constitution is a dead document. And then you have other ones that go, oh, it's open for interpretation. And then you have other ones that say, oh, it's a living document. And we just need to... Yeah, no, we don't just need to. But, you know, I mean, it, it's it's the 4th of July, and it, it used to mean something for me. It used to. And now it's just, it's kind of a sad reminder that all of these people, you know, beat their chests, do the America thing, and they really don't have a concept of just exactly what I think it's supposed to mean. You know? Unalienable rights. Those are things that nobody has a nobody else has a right to take away from you. If they don't want it taken from themselves, then they have no right to take it from you. Period. You know, and that's maybe today needs to be a new kind of Independence Day where people just you know they make themselves independent instead of being dependent on this government, on this mindset. Maybe they need a mindset shift. Maybe that's what we're here for. Maybe that's why I'm still here. Because I keep spouting it. <laughs> and I just think, wow, come on. How hard is it to actually grasp the concept of if you truly wish to be free, that means that you are responsible for, you get the benefits and the detriments. You get to deal with all of it. You know, basically because if it was your decision to do such a thing, then you get to own that. Period. That's being free. You are free enough to be responsible for every action that you take and for every action that you don't take. So, you know, be independent. Don't expect someone else to take care of you, coddle you, whatever. There's an awful lot of nonsense going on these days. And I just, it's hard to, to it's really hard to celebrate independence when I see how, how dependent this world has become on a government Oh, they have a quote up here. We are fast approaching the stage of the ultimate inversion, the stage where the government is free to do anything it pleases, while the citizen may act only by permission, which is the stage of the darkest period of human history, the stage of rule by brute force. That was Ayn Rand in The Nature of Government, 1963. So... Things are kind of bass backwards now. We live in a bass backward world, and and we need to, we need to get past that. We need to cut that crap out. We need to start taking back what we allowed to be taken from us. Um, let's see how that one's fairly long. Um, there's one here that I saw on Twitter earlier. It's from Townhall.com. Who died and made the Supreme Court God? And I don't think I've got time to get through it. Plus, I, I got kids here and I want to go play with my kids. But I'll just, I'll do a quick little blurb out of it and then 
share it with you guys. Um, to hear some liberals tell it, you would think that America is finished as a nation with the retirement of Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. One such person tweeted, literally in tears, haven't felt this hopeless in a long time. With Justice Kennedy leaving, we now have two options as Americans. Get fitted for your Nazi uniform or report directly to your death camp. How do you fight the darkness without light? My spark is going out. Oh, sweetheart, you know what? You liberals, you, mm, and I used to, cl I used to say I was a liberal because I truly am very liberal minded, you know, in the classical definition of that word, you know, you do your thing, I'll do my thing, so long as you don't cause harm and I don't cause harm, especially not intentional harm. Sometimes harm is caused unintentionally. But so long as you do not intentionally cause harm, we're good. You say your thing, I'll say my thing. You know, we can agree to disagree if nothing else. But man, come on, people. California Senator Kamala Harris said that Trump's replacement for Kennedy, whoever that will be, means the destruction of the Constitution of the United States. You know, I thought that same damn shit when Dangleberry was in there, too, and then I realized it doesn't make a shit and bit of difference. He's just the bullseye. He's that face on the bullseye. That's all it is. This is all smoke and mirrors. It's, it's designed to get you. Apparently, these sentiments are terribly wrong on so many fronts. The founders created an experiment where we the people would govern ourselves. <laughs> and how's that working out for you? Yeah, apparently in recent decades, the high court has taken upon itself more power than King George III could possibly have lusted after. It's not just the Constitution. It's not just the Supreme Court. SCOTUS isn't the only one that's reaching and nobody's saying, back off, Jack. The Founding Fathers clearly felt that both a monarchy and an oligarchy, or the rule by a few, were tyrannical. James Madison, a key architect of the Constitution, put it this way. The accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary in the same hands, whether of one, a few, or many, or whether hereditary, self-appointed, or elective, may just be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. Wow. See? And there was an awful lot of bickering between Madison and Jefferson and... Quite a, they're, I think they wound up locking themselves in, didn't they? If I remember reading that right. However, through the years, we've experienced Supreme Court virtually governing our lives, and we assume that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, there's an awful lot of them that assume that because, well, that's, they've done it like that for years. Just because you've done something wrong for years doesn't make it any less wrong and doesn't make it even close to resembling right. <sighs> okay, he lists all kinds of different things on here. That Supreme Court rulings. Um, the Supreme Court is supposed to interpret the Constitution and evaluate whether a certain law being challenged does or does not pass constitutional muster. The justices are not supposed to just dream about what they think the Constitution should say. In the history of the world, America has enjoyed the stability of the Constitution, which was predicted by or predicated on our God-given rights as seen in the Declaration of Independence, yada, yada, yada. Ronald Reagan put it this way, in this country of ours took place the greatest revolution that has ever taken place in the world's history. Every other revolution simply exchanged one set of rulers for another. But here, for the first time in all the thousands of years of man's relation to man, a little group of men, the Founding Fathers, for the first time established the idea that you and I are within ourselves the God-given right and ability to determine our own destiny. And instead, activist courts taking on more power than they ought to have under the Constitution have helped turn America into a moral swamp. 
well, America is a moral swamp, but you cannot legislate morality. You just plain can't. And people that have to go to an outside source to be told what is right and what is wrong are morally bankrupt. That's my opinion. So, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on reallibertymedia.com, channel 10. <laughs> I have my own. I have my own. Oh, well. And thank you for putting up with me, on not only on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday, but on this 4th of July Independence Day. And you know what? Make that really feel right. Start taking some independence on yourself and being responsible. That would be awesome. Just one step at a time. You know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you build a brick wall? One brick at a time. How do you get your back, get your freedom back, your liberty back? One step at a time. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your 4th of July. If you're playing with firecrackers, please don't blow something off that you were born with. <laughs> And uh, have fun with your family and friends. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. But until then, I am going to go and spend some time with my daughter and her hubby and her, her daughter. And uh, Grim, I will not get my blog stuff done till tomorrow. So just saying, because I got family here. So I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Have an awesome rest of your day. And remember... I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>